light. Thanks, y'all. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for having me, and thanks to Glug. This is a really interesting group of people. Um, I, I actually did know what Glug meant before. I think in Australia, we like to drink a lot, so that's kind of normal for us. Um, well, okay, I'm going to start by, like, saying that our stories are somewhat similar in geography, but very different in execution. Um, so, Australian-born, have been here for three years. I'm one of seven from four different marriages, so I thought that was interesting. Um, they're all on my father's side, so that's even more interesting. Um, but I was really brought up by like one powerhouse woman who's pretty incredible. She left my dad with $1,000 in the bank and a newborn baby, and placed one ad in the newspaper and got 26 students to start a design school. Um, so design Design is really my, my everything, that's what I was born into, it's what I believe in, it's, it's like my language. Um, and I think that's a really good analogy because I actually, oh thank you, um, I actually think that I am now building a whole new language um, and I'll get into why and how and all of those funky reasons. Um, so the reason I came to America is because I built a product for Durex called Funderware and Funderware is vibrating knickers for couples in long distance relationships. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, quite literally like it's funder from down under. It is. I've heard every cliche. Um, everyone always asks, "Are you wearing it?" And I'm not. Um, but this was part of like my creative journey. That's for sure. Um, obviously, I studied design. I studied at my mum's school, which is called the White House Institute of Design. Didn't tell anyone my last name because uh, I thought that was a little bit obscure. Um, and then went on to do my masters in Italy um, and had a full journey. And then was brought home from Italy, kicking and screaming. Um, but I became really fascinated with knitwear and knitwear as a technology in itself. Um, and then was running business development for her where I was bringing in industry relations so that we were actually doing real curriculum. Um, and in doing that, I learned about 3D printing and I learned about software and I learned about hardware. And I had no idea how to fucking do any of it. Um, but I could speak the language. And that truly was the only gift that I had, was that I was connecting dots for people that they didn't even know how to connect themselves. So following this, um, we started realizing um, that using vibration on the body was a somewhat natural thing to do. In fact, they're saying it is the first ever form of communication that you have with your mother when you're in the womb. Um, so it became this like, okay, what is the future of using the skin as an interface? And that's really what this company has become, even though we had no idea we were building that when we used vibrating panties. Um, and what it is a really interesting example, we, in our app in the interface, when a man picks up the app, he'll, um, he'll touch one spot on the app, and I'm sure you can imagine which spot that is. Uh, but when a woman picks up the app, she'll move it around. And that movement is actually the sensation that we're trying to create, whether it's intimates or whether it's something entirely different. That movement of haptics around the body is where it becomes really, really fascinating. So following this, and actually in January, we launched a product called Nadi X, and they're a pair of yoga pants that are self-correctional. Uh, so they learn you, and they use haptic feedback around the hips, around the knees, around the ankles, and you select inside the app which poses you would like help with, and then instead of having to go to a yoga class and beg the instructor to touch you, which is what I do, um, you can get correction in your pants. I can't wait for the day um, when you can actually say pants on, pants off, and we have them all voice controlled. Um, so this is the world that I live in now. It's somewhat mindful, it's somewhat fast paced, it's somewhat technology, it's somewhat design, but it's definitely not boring. Um, and it's definitely not linear. And it's, I have to say that I think now, now that I'm doing this, I'm actually running like five different companies at once. So I am um, the CEO and the founder, um, and I have a, Global team of like, people everywhere, Switzerland, Australia, LA, and I'm manufacturing in Sri Lanka. Um, so this year we finally raised some money, which makes life so much easier, but also I have a boss for the first time, which sucks. Um, so I'm really learning like a whole new language of like, oh God, I have to do reports for people. That's, that's also like entirely new. Um, and you have to prove yourself constantly. And I think earlier this year, I went through a bit of an emotional roller coaster where I moved house, I broke up with my boyfriend, I got suspended from a private club. And, and it wasn't because I was actually doing anything wrong. Um, it was because one of my guests was saying hi to someone who we knew, and so that someone just happens to be a celebrity. Um, and so I, I've, I realized that like, going through that emotional journey has only made me a more interesting person. So instead of um, leaving that emotion out, I bring it in, and I make sure that every time I have a conversation with someone, they know exactly what's going on. I don't believe in this like, concept of don't air your dirty laundry. I think if you're transparent, you're gonna have a much, much better time. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, so being transparent, we actually had a really good year um, with some press. We got a shout out on Jimmy Fallon, where of course he compared these pants to something that they enjoy when they are in an intimate com relationship. Um, ooh, what, pardon me. So what, this is what happens. I see. I now understand. It accidentally clicks. Yes. <laughs> um, and so where I've got to now after having that emotional roller coaster this year um, was basically to realize that the data visualization about emotions and about our human experience is really fucked. <laughs> basically, they use a, a Wi-Fi symbol on your watch and they think that that means like you're connected with yourself. Um, I, don't, I don't agree. I actually think they've hyper masculinized, is that a word? Um, they hyper masculinized like this quantified self into us believing that like understanding how many steps you take means you understand yourself. This to me is a far more interesting description of like understanding what's really going on in your body. Um, and that has ended up becoming one of our three pillars of like how we do business and what we care about. Um, so these are some of my lessons that I've learned um, through the last three years of being in the US, but also just building products that I also have no idea how to build. Um, I employ really, really smart people, but I ask them these questions all the time. It's like, don't put the tech before the human experience. So define first what the human experience is. And they say there's five things that make us truly human, intimacy, shelter, community, self-awareness, there's a fifth one that I never remember. Food, that's one. <laughs> um, and so if you design for those experiences first, then the technology will be successful. Um, following that is, as a fashion designer, no one tells you to think about data. Like, literally nobody. Even in my marketing classes, we weren't taught about data taught about data, and data is the same as data, in case you were confused. <laughs> um, and so to now like build that systems thinking into like the beginning of your design process, that is not something that I was ever given, and I wish I had been. Um, so this is an experiment we did during Super Bowl. We have a fan jersey product that connects you to live sports data. So our second pillar is, in fact, connecting you with those moments in time that you care about the most. Um, and if it is for you, it's like a particular sports game or it's sharing that moment with someone, you can actually share that physically with someone across their chest. So it feels like a collective heartbeat. It feels like a build-up of adrenaline. It feels like that celebration dance. He actually does the nae-nae, um, which is my favourite part of the app, to be honest. Um, the other part I realized about this at this time, this was obviously in February, was that I was taking myself really, really seriously. Um, and the more that I had fun with like my actual work, the more I was able to keep going, even though it was a really, really hard time. Um, so we had some wonderful press around this. We actually won, it's a showroom privé award, which is in Paris. It was the first time Paris had ever recognized wearables at the biggest fashion convention in the world. Um, so that was amazing and we won it. And there were so many beautiful competitors in that space as well. So then in June, we launched this for soccer, uh, for football, um, and we launched it so it did have a little bit more fun. Uh, we've basically perfected the language of how to make sure they know what's going on without having to look at the screen. And I tested this out in Manchester this year with like the most ridiculous fans you've ever met in your life. Like they have tattoos of their teams all over their body. Um, and these kids, and they have a 40% um, fan base of just children, these kids learnt the language after one try. And when I mean learnt the language, they learnt the physical language, like the gugum, 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 the rrr, rrr on the body after one go. And they're like, oh, that was a red card. Um, and it's incredible that this is like so intuitive to them. So my lessons to leave you with are really about designing for all five senses um, and designing for movement. So not designing ever for one simple solution that is going to be that way for, for the rest of time because it changes and it moves. And that's not just for design, but it's also for the human body. Like, if you're thinking about hardware and how the body works, you've got to design for movement. And not a lot of people are doing that at the moment. And did you like that I did the wings when I talked about movement just then? <laughs> um, how to design for touch in a digital, digital age. This is obviously my main focus. We're thinking about how does touch create a whole new language for people and what does it mean in particular areas of the body. And, and this is where I mean I'm actually building a whole new language. Um, and then how to design for discovery and complexity and humour. Like, we're Australian, you have to take the piss out of yourself, otherwise you're not going to succeed. And no one will be able to take you seriously. Um, and I think where, where my point of difference is to a lot of technology companies and, and even this space, um, I don't believe that screens are the future. I don't believe in a minority report future. My version of the future is far more like a Harry Potter film or a Harry Potter book, um, where we've enchanted these objects that have a little essence of nostalgia, that have meaning to, to you and that make you feel emotional, but enchanting them with something really, really beautiful, which at this point in time is technology. Uh, so thank you very much for having me.
We'll be right back. 